Hey there YouTube, I am the Caffeinated Dad, and today I'm going to be covering the Stag Clan. The Stag Clan is the first clan you can play during the story mode, and is one of the easiest clans to learn. I'm going to cover the clan's specific strengths and weaknesses, as well as how you can start each match. Check the timestamps down below to jump to specific parts. Let's get into it. The main strengths of the Stag Clan is that they are beginner friendly and fairly well rounded. Their increased starting resources makes it easier on new players as well as their Thane rank grants more resources after reaching it. As mentioned in my Victory Conditions video, the Stag Clan has a strong emphasis on a Thane victory, which I'll explain later. They also have a unique building called the Hall of Skulls. That primarily generates happiness and fame, but can also be upgraded to generate crowns as well. Their last main strength is that they can expand territory rather quickly in comparison to other clans. The weaknesses of the Stag Clan is that they have a non-unique military. There's nothing special about it in comparison to other clans. And lastly, most of their benefits are tied with fame generation. The Stag Clan playstyle has an emphasis on territorial expansion and fame generation. The starting resource bonus helps out significantly with colonizing the first few tiles without having to wait or delay. This means that they can produce their military faster, clear tiles faster, and set up their economy for mid-game quicker than other clans. Use this to your advantage. The Stag Clan has a knack for racking up fame. With their unique building, the Hall of Scalds, they passively generate fame fairly quickly. Also, with the assistance of their starting resource bonuses, they can progress fairly quickly with military to clear neutral monsters and then colonize those tiles, offering a huge burst of fame. As mentioned before, their economic capabilities are extremely adept at the resource demand of a fame victory. Once they reach 500 fame for the Jarl rank, their upgraded production buildings gain an additional 10% production, as well as 1% increased production for every 100 fame that you accrue. Meaning, as you generate more fame, your economy snowballs bigger, making it that much more difficult to slow you down. Also, if you have enjoyed this guide thus far, make sure to like the video and hit that subscribe button. I like to make my content around Northgard and other strategy games. Alright, let's talk about Lore Tree Pathways. There are a number of ways that the Stag Clan can build their lore tree. I will give you two separate options, building up to 10 lore selections. To start out, I focus on sharp axes first. This allows us to generate more wood leading into the first winter, following by eradication and then food preservation. The Stag Clan likes to focus heavily around food silos and their food production, so increasing that as best we can is always going to be the best benefit. After that, I go for Value of Great Deeds and Weaponsmith. Value of Great Deeds is going to allow our Scalds to generate crowns passively, which is going to help out with our economy. And then our fifth is going to be Weaponsmith to increase the damage of our units. After that, I go Coinage to allow us to generate more crowns as well as start our trade routes. And then after that, I go for Hero Emblem, which massively reduces the stone cost of the Altar of Kings but then also allows it to produce fame. Eight is gonna be Carpentry Mastery, which will reduce the cost of all of our building upgrades, and then Glory of the Clan. Glory of the Clan is very important because that increases all fame by 20%, and increases the gains from trade routes and great trade routes by 20%. After that, I go Defensive Strategy. If you're gonna have a big territory, you gotta be able to defend it. Building towers and having more resilient civilians is definitely gonna be the way to go. As far as major blessings are concerned, Jord's Blessing, which offers up stone and iron, is in my opinion the best, followed by Baldur's Blessing, which is increasing happiness, and then Freya's Blessing last. The second Lore Tree build is going to focus on Sharp Axes first, followed by Eradication. This is going to help out with our early economy, and then go straight down to Value of Great Deeds, Coinage, Carpentry Mastery, and then Glory of the Clan. We're focusing on Glory of the Clan. After that, we pick up Weaponsmith to help our units be able to defend themselves, and then go up to Food Preservation and then Hero Emblem. 
After that, defensive strategy as a round out of the top 10. The major blessings do not change. Jord's blessing is first, followed by Balvir's blessing second. Having said everything that I've talked about the Stag Clan, let's put this into an in-game scenario. We will be looking at the first 10 minutes of a match. I will put a simplistic build path forward of how you can set up and develop your clan leading into the first winter. Alright, so surprise surprise right out the gate we are going to go ahead and create our scouting camp. We need to explore the surrounding area, so let's go ahead into it. As mentioned before, the Stag Clan has a huge benefit to their starting resources. If you look at this, all the way across the board, they have quite a bit of food, wood, crowns, all that. They get their starting bonus really does help them out in this aspect. Now we're going to go ahead and scout the immediate tiles. We're going to take a look and see what's around us, see what tiles we need to prioritize. It looks like there's a shipwreck right there, and then go from there. Now again with the Stag Clan, their major benefit is their starting bonus, but then also how much fame they can generate in a given time. They can generate a mess of fame very, very quickly. Hmm. So it doesn't look like we have any food options for either of these. However, I guess in the meantime, our option would be a three sheep right here that we could eventually sacrifice or slaughter for food. However, we're not going to be hurting for food for quite a while because, obviously, our, our starting bonuses. So we can opt in for a tile like this, which might be more beneficial. Can't do anything about that one, and can't do anything about that one. So, let's go ahead and go for this one right here. This is going to go ahead and allow us to get this shipwreck right here so the scout can take a look. And then, of course, this stone for down the line. Now, more likely than not, we can get both of these tiles before we have to go and get this one over here. So I'm going to have this scout clear this area right here, or check that area right there, and then move this way. Now, this is going to be our focus here because of it, ha of it having two fish and then uh, two farm or a farming slot, I should say. Um, but no, this is, this is a decent start. I'm actually going to go ahead and colonize this right now. Actually, you can just stay there. Stay right there for a second. Now, given this particular start, it is pretty good, resource heavy, we are going to have um, uh, a major emphasis leading towards that. Over here is another shipwreck, but then also the lore stone or rune stone, that's going to be perfect, leading into our first area. Now over here again we have two more wolves, so clearing out these tiles is going to be a big focus. I'm going to actually go ahead and jump to building our training camp. Now, this is a bold move, Cotton, but this is allowing us to go ahead and make a jump into clearing this tile so that we can have sustainable food. But as you can tell, we are more than perfectly fine, more than okay on food, um, but we'll go from there. So this tile in here only has two building slots, so I'm going to end up saving one for the mine that's right here. This one over here has four, so after I'm done building this one, Probably going to build a woodcutting lodge right there and then see what there is to CCC. Good, 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 good. Things are moving quite a, right along. Bam, bam. We got our two warriors. Let's go ahead and over here to clear out these two tiles, which will definitely help. We have one scout going on over there. No problem. Have these guys go over here and clear that tile. So given everything that we have, we have three tiles right now and we're doing pretty good. I'm going to send one of my villagers on over there to go ahead and clear that particular tile. So I'm going to try a bit of microwing for this. We'll see how this works. This guy, can, this warrior here can only take one more hit. So as long as they are focused on this one, I'm okay with that. So we've cleared out the surrounding tiles. Looks like we're pretty well butted up right here. I'm gonna have him convert back to doing food on the next tile. Actually, I'm gonna go ahead and build this wood cutting lodge right here. 
it's going to be beneficial for us to build not only a food silo here, but then a, excuse me, it's going to be a, a good for a food silo right here, as well as a fishery. Those are going to be the three buildings that I'm going to focus there. Opening up, we're going to go sharp axes, which is, of course, going to be a huge, huge benefit. I'm going to go ahead and build that food silo fairly early on. Get you going there. One wood cutter is going to be more than enough. I can actually go ahead and colonize this tile right here. Now, I have four tiles right out the gate. I am producing a decent amount of food. I have wood going. Now, really, all I'm going to look to do is have our crowns and eventually uh, start mining some iron, or some stone and some iron. And I have these guys hanging around here. Military force isn't all that that much right now, but that's okay. That is perfectly fine. So right now, farmers are producing 11 food. We have more than enough food right now. Right after that, we're gonna go for that fishery. Everything is looking good. I'm going to build up a little bit of a stockpile of wood and then go into our second woodcutter's lodge. I end up building that on over there because I have a handful of villagers. Starting out nice and fast. Again, and uh, the reason that I went for, for food silo here first, which isn't a common build path. Ah, biscuits. Actually, I'm going to want to... Uh, these guys to get pruned a little. I'm gonna eventually have to build a mender's hut because I've taken quite a bit of damage, but it's actually not too terribly bad. So I got two woodcutters going, I got a rune stone going. I should actually go ahead and take this guy on over here, scavenge through there. That'll be a nice bur burst of wood and crowns. I have quite the economy rolling right now. So much, so much economy. Have them go on over there. Now, I have a couple of options right now. I don't actually have to wait that long to actually get into stone and iron. So I'm going to send one of my villagers over here to start mining that area. So that we can start getting some stone. We get that stone deposit right there. That'll be good. Right on time. The house is finishing like it was planned. Good. We have a decent start right now leading up into the first winter. So I've already gotten the food. And now again, this was a really good food choice because of both fish and wheat. Or fish and fields. Now again, I have to stress that this is a huge, huge benefit to the Stag Clan. Is that I was able to get two tiles that essentially had no food and jump straight to one that did. Good, so the quarry's built. We'll st go ahead and start mining some stone right now. I have plenty of wood being cr uh, produced. I have a scout over here looking at that area. Once we actually get into winter, I'm gonna take another scout and start hitting these surrounding areas and then go from there. No problemo, everything is looking good. So we go into eradication. Now eradication is a really good one because our food preservation is in essence the stag clan's benefit. So we do erad eradication right there. And now our farmers are producing 12 food and our villagers are producing 12. And then here shortly after the first winter, I'll go ahead and build this next tile. I can actually colonize that one for free right now, but we're about to hit winter. We'll see where we're at. That gave us a huge burst of that gave us a huge, huge burst of wood and crowns. Now again, looking to build our long chip dock. So right now, I'm getting essentially all of our materials that I would need. So I want you to go get this one right here. I want to check out the surrounding area. So right now, I can already tell you that we are going to be perfectly fine going into winter. So as of right now, we take this integer, which is minus 9, we multiply it by 6. 9 times 6 is going to get us 45. Correct, me, correct my math if I'm wrong. Um, and then from there, we are going to times that by 3 and see what number we get. So, well, see, now we're down to minus 8. So, 8 times 6 is going to be 48. There we go. 
and we are just cruising along. Don't check my map. My, uh, it's been a very long day. My map might be off. So I'm mining stone, mining iron. First stone upgrade is obviously going to be our town hall. Send these guys off over here. Now with that, I'm actually going to opt for going out and hunting some fame. Now since nobody has done it, I want to have an emphasis of building up a, good, a decent food stock leading into winter. I'm actually going to try to progress towards these the center tiles to see if I can find the uh, uh, the main center tile, which will give me a quick burst of fame, which is going to be very, very helpful. So we're doing good. We're doing good. We got food. We got tons of resources flowing right now. We got lore gonna look to after this next winter to build a fishery right here we can eventually upgrade that silo for uh for fairly 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 cheap gonna go ahead and upgrade our town hall which is of course going to be our first no problem going through we got two guys getting stone that's going to help out getting some some villagers coming in fairly fairly quickly and this is a good start now, with the, this large amount of crowns that we have, we can look to push. So, in that sense, depending on the type of victory style that you're going to play, if you're going to look for a domination victory, you might end up upgrading the scout camp and sending the, the scout in and further to scout out the enemy tiles. Or you might look to upgrade other type of production buildings. I always opt for production buildings, but that's just me. So... Right here, the food preservation is going to be our next focus. That should be very, very good. Scouts have gotten to a new area. Center tile is going to be like right off over here. And have them just keep on keeping on. Where can you scout? I guess you can scout right there. All right, so we're getting both iron and stone right after this. So once I get this next iron, I am going to go ahead and get my... Whoop. I'm going to go ahead and get my... Oh, we're going to be fine. We're going to hit negative numbers here. Oh, saved by the bell. All right, now that we have our gotten into our next year, we have enough for war chief. We have a warrior to defend and help fight. Things are looking good. And yeah, from there... Oh no, we're running out of food. Sorry, sheep. Sacrifices had to be made. So we're doing good. So typically we would say go ahead and upgrade uh, the individ individual food production places themselves first. But here, it might actually benefic benefit us to upgrade the food silo first. So we have that. These guys are just going through. No problem. Looks like we got some wolves still hanging around. Looks like there's a Valkyrie and the Tree of Yadrasil. So that rounds out our objectives that we needed. We are getting decent stone and iron. Things are looking pretty good. I can actually send one of you guys off over here. Once we start getting some more food and... I need one of you guys to go over there. Now we're doing pretty good. Now this tile is really our food producing tile, we'll say. It is going to be doing very, very good. I would actually even look to uh, upgrade um, this field right here. That would be a strong benefit. But there's a number of different ways that we can go from here. So since we don't have a whole heck of a lot scouted, we could upgrade the scout camp. We could, it, now, again, all of these depend on the type of match that you want to play. Uh, looking at the priority of upgrades, obviously Town Hall has to be first. I would always recommend doing production uh, places first. So either wood, food, or crowns in that sense. But um, no, we are, we are doing pretty good. Pretty, pretty good. All right, so once we discover this, we'll go ahead and get the Thane rank, which is going to be right after our first winter. Things are looking good, looking good, looking good. Very good, very good, very good. So I'm just waiting for this thing, or this to pop out, and then we get that first rank. Getting some lore over here. Gonna eventually have to build a, uh, what do you call it, a um, another house. 
Obviously, you could build a forge right now, which is a completely viable option if we wanted to start looking to build a relic. So, there we go. We got Thane rank. Thanks for moving forward. Now we do Hero Emblem. This is the build path I would suggest if we were going to go into a more focused build onto a Thane victory. But, yep, there you go. That's how we started out. How do you play the Stag Clan? Tell me in the comments section down below. I really hope you enjoyed this guide and enjoyed becoming the king or, or queen of Northgard. As always, I am the Caffeinated Dad, and I will see you guys around.